like to welcome everyone to uh, the second in the series of webinars um, co-sponsored by various rabbinical groups, uh, as well as um, the uh, national organizations. And I want to thank everyone who had a hand in uh, coordinating this and bringing all of this together. Our um, speakers today, the topic today is, is uh, Primer on Internet Antisemitism and Neo-Nazi Incitement. And we're very, very privileged to have with us Ambassador Mark Ginsburg and Eric Feinberg. Um, Ambassador Ginsburg served as U.S. Ambassador to Morocco from 1994 to 1998 and served in a number of uh, very important positions, senior advisor positions to the President of the United States uh, and uh, House Liaison to the Department of State and many other things. I refer you to his Wikipedia page and other places uh, for, um, for that. Uh, he is currently a president of, coal of a coalition for a safer web. And we're very pleased as well that the vice president for content moderation, Eric Feinberg, uh, has joined as well. So, Professor Ginsburg, please. Ah, I'd like to be called professor instead of ambassador. Thank you. Uh, uh, gentlemen and ladies, rabbi, fellow, uh, fellow Americans, I'm really grateful to have this opportunity. I want you to know that I'm not going to be pulling any punches. I have a PowerPoint presentation here that is significant and reveals and reflects the danger that American Jewry faces from the incitement of neo-Nazi operations on the web. In the hour that we have together, there is no way that I can go through every major point on my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, this will be videotaped and hopefully you'll be able to refer to it. I want you to also know that we, that Eric and I have spent a considerable amount of time uh, working on this. We launched the Coalition for a Safer Web, and I'm going to start moving my slide presentation. Uh, just a few months ago, it's a nonpartisan, uh, nonprofit advocacy organization that is dedicated, let me close this window if I can here, uh, that is dedicated to forging public and private sector technology solutions. And our goal, and again, I'm not going to read every word of this, is to provide the private sector with new social media audit operations, as well as help to generate new technology and software innovations. My colleague and Vice President Eric Feinberg is one of the nation's leading experts on innovation, tech innovation, and rapidly identifying extremist hate and illegal operation content on social media platforms. We also support regulation and sanction of the deep web internet companies, and we also are very much involved in helping to promote student education, whether they be in Hebrew schools or in, L or in high schools or junior high schools. I want to start with this slide because it says everything about what we are about to say to you today. The neo-Nazis are organizing secret paramilitary trainings across America. And while all of us are well aware that there has been a huge spike in uh, vandalism as well as attacks on synagogues, whether it be Pittsburgh or Poway, the FBI has been interdicting and interrupting scores of others' attacks by neo-Nazis that are determined to commit vandalism as well as mayhem and to harm the Jewish community across this country. I cannot overestimate the danger that we face. And the reason why I've taken this on towards the, shall we say, twilight on my career is that this is an important spiritual commitment on my part and Eric's part, as well as the other staff of the coalition, to do what we can to help the American Jewish community understand the threat and how to deal with this threat and, how, and not how to be passive about the threat. So we're going to try to cover four major topics today. First is the radicalization conveyor belt of the mainstream social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all of the ones that you, your families, and your congregations are well aware of. Number two is the dangers lurking on the dark web, which I'll explain, and the internet infrastructure support firms that provide the technological support to permit these neo-Nazi operations to operate unhindered. Three, to help you understand what is not being done with respect to regulation, legislation in the private sector. And four, a call to action, what I think rabbis can do uh, to help, to help uh, motivate 
and mobilize the Jewish community far more actively. So let me first turn to the complicit social media companies. And you may ask, uh, why aren't the Zuckerbergs of the world, Facebook, YouTube, and others, doing more to eliminate online, uh, online anti-Semitism? Well, uh, they'll argue with you that there's significant volume challenges, huge amounts of data and content that are being uh, downloaded every day uh, onto their platforms, and that's accurate. Secondly, uh, that there are variant reappearances. For example, when the Christchurch massacre or the, uh, or the Pittsburgh massacre uh, took place, uh, many of the neo-Nazi operations were able to rob uh, and steal uh, the videos that were uploaded of live streaming these attacks. And subsequently, they were able to play around with the algorithms to make, create variants that were reappearing. Uh, also, there's certainly no financial or legal incentive the way these corporations operate to rapidly uh, uh, mobilize technology to help, in effect, substantially reduce this neo-Nazi threat. They also refuse to integrate new technologies. Why? Because, uh, and now I'm going to get a little technical. Congress passed in, in 1996 a law called the Communications Decency Act. That Communications Decency Act has a section called 230, number 230. And number 230, in effect, grants content immunity for all of the major social media companies with respect to any content that is uploaded on their platform. So if there's neo-Nazi incitement, Mark Zuckerberg can stand in front of Congress as he has done and say, that's not our problem. We're not responsible for this. Section 230 absolves us of any content liability. And as a result, they also don't have an incentive to integrate new technologies. There's also those who argue that we have to protect free speech. Uh, the ACLU and other organizations have testified that Nazi propaganda is protected speech, even if it is incitement. And finally, there's no public or private accounting of deplatforming pledges. That is, when I use the word deplatforming, that is meant how many of these companies have pledged publicly uh, to, your, to your congregations, to the country at large, uh, that we're doing everything we can based on our terms of service uh, to deplatform this content. But there is absolutely no way to quantify or to publicly or in some sort of private capacity to audit whether or not they're achieving the objectives that they claim that they want to achieve. They argue in my next slide that artificial intelligence uh, is the answer. And uh, unfortunately, artificial intelligence is really being hyped. I'll give you an example, something that my colleague Eric can speak to. Uh, we found out, for example, that many of these neo-Nazis are adopting Yiddish terminology to thwart the so-called artificial intelligence that is being used by social media platforms, uh, claiming that AI is going to be able to help them flag uh, this content. Eric, that what has happened here is we've had to, in effect, I've had to go into my mother's Yiddish that I learned as a kid uh, to be able to intercept content that is evading the artificial intelligence algorithms that are being deployed by social media platforms. So how do neo-Nazis use social media? First of all, I'm sorry, Eric? OK. I thought there was someone who was trying to break in. Uh, they use the established platforms uh, to accomplish this objective. They're supported by free speech libertarians as well as the ACLU. And Facebook is the primary portal to organize and promote events and to recruit so, for example, there's an organization that was based in Canada, uh, which changed its name several times. It is the largest neo-Nazi operation in Canada. It's called the Sons of Odin. It has 7,000 members still, still on Facebook. Uh, the League of the South was banned. Uh, it, too, was a white nationalist operation based in Alabama, but it's back on Facebook. And I want to be particularly uh, condemnatory, if there is such a word, about YouTube. YouTube is a goldmine 
a gold mine of anti-Semitic gaming videos and how to kill bomb instructions. In other words, almost every uh, neo-Nazi or white nationalist or domestic terrorist, including ISIS operator, has been able to go in, onto YouTube where there have been over 100,000 videos on how to construct a pipe bomb. I have written time and again extensively about YouTube's failure to take down uh, this content, which is nothing but an instructional video to incite terrorism. Now, how do we, how, what sort of is the uh, con conveyor belt myth um, uh, terminology that is used to hunt hate on anti-Semitic hate that attracts some of these young adults or teenagers? First of all, there's plenty of propaganda on the, uh, on the web that the Holocaust never happened, that Jeffrey Epstein and Harvey Weinstein are Jews are pedophiles and perverts and reflects the re Jewish religion, that Jews only represent 2% of the U.S. population, but Jews control the banks and media, and that the impeachment of Trump is a Jewish conspiracy by Jewish Congressman Schiff Nadler and Lieutenant Colonel Vidman, who's actually testifying as we speak before the House. The other way in which these neo-Nazis are able to operate is that they are able to use encryption technology and apps that is shielded from penetration by uh, eavesdroppers, including the FBI. Uh, you may have had your kids at home uh, who have been communicating back and forth in innocent communications on apps that you can download from the App Store on Apple and from uh, uh, from Samsung. Uh, for example, Telegram, in the middle of my screen, you'll see Telegram and WhatsApp, their chat services, and neo-Nazis communicate via password encrypted platforms. No one has been able to break the, the threat that encryption poses for being able to penetrate neo-Nazi operations because these apps allow users to upload unlimited videos, images, audio clips, and other files that are otherwise encrypted so we can't quite see what's going on unless, unless we do what my friend Eric has done masterfully and I have done is to create avatars to penetrate sites and to be invited in and given the passwords that permit us to do this. Um, Vice News, which is probably the best investigative news on neo-Nazi operations, analyzed 150 public-facing far-right telegram channels to reveal so much of this, how much of this is taking place. We, on the next slide, you'll see that we talk about the anti-Semitic content rabbit hole. Someone goes to Google and puts in the word neo-Nazi or puts in the word Zionist. And the way in which uh, uh, Google makes its money is if that young man, woman is staring, using their eyeballs to stare at ads that follow these people as they continue their searches. So the more eyeballs there are, the more advertising there is, the more clicks there are, the more money is made. And that's the money making ecosystem of social media operations. I want to make sure you understand this. The more that a person continues to investigate and to research, the more that ads will follow this person and that they're clicking on and following these persons into ominous content. And this includes Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts, messaging boards, and advertised encrypted email addresses and link accounts between platforms. Now, again, I don't expect you to understand all of this, uh, but I want you to understand more or less the 30,000 foot level. There's an, there's an account, uh, there's an actual browser called Minds. You'll see at the bottom of my, of my PowerPoint on this slide. Posts on Minds account are linked. For example, there's an organization in Germany called the Führerkrieg Division, which is a neo-Nazi terrorist organization based in Germany that's linked to a site, a community chat board that is used by neo-Nazis called GAV. And Opaline displays its encrypted proto, pro, proton mail email addresses to get these people into the more encrypted areas of the internet. Uh, this slide is hard for you to see, 
but it is another example of an organization at the top. You'll see the words uh, Stormfront. Stormfront is another neo-Nazi incitement organization that has penetrated into this so-called encryption world used by Minds, they use Mind Browser and Gab. So going back to the major social media platforms, Zuckerberg likes pledges and reality. We have caught Mr. Zuckerberg lying before Congress time and again about how many times he has been able to get his uh, organization to permanently take down uh, neo-Nazi and anti-Semitic sites. The problem is, is that the representations are true to a point. He doesn't reveal that almost a third of these sites reappear days later under different names and under different categories with the same content. You may say this is a game of whack-a-mole. I will say this is a failure of artificial intelligence and the willpower of Zuckerberg, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and the others. Now, uh, these social media companies have pledged to do better, and some of them really have. They've tried to do more, but they're still nowhere near. It's almost as if they're, they're living in a 45 uh, you know, think of a re 33 and a third record, and we're in a five gig world, okay? Uh, they have created a, an organization called the Global Internet Forum to Combat Terrorism. It really is a PR stunt. It has no staff, no structure, no organization, but they like to sell this to Congress as an effort to exchange information among themselves. They certainly have expanded their plans to combat online extremism, but again, what have they done? They've hired third-party flaggers. These are individuals who sit in front of their computer and flag content for them as consultants. So you may have seen articles about how the working conditions for these poor flaggers. Again, they've also deployed uh, uh, artificial intelligence, and they claim they've, they've banned white nationalism and white separatism. Uh, those who argue that these bannings only drive these organizations to the dark web and deep web have a unvalid point because these, these, this content is still very much, very much appearing on major social media platforms, including, uh, including on um, Twitter and YouTube. The reality is that there are variants of the Christchurch massacre up in other languages, which is an absolute misrepresentation by Zuckerberg that all of these variants of the Christchurch massacre are down. Secondly, there is no uniformity of terms of service or means of corroborating success, as I said earlier. There's no auditing function to corroborate whether Facebook, YouTube, and the others are achieving the success that they claim they are. Um, Twitter, for example, is hosting accounts for an entity called The Base, which I'll spend a great deal of my time later on in this half hour the most dangerous neo-Nazi internet one-stop shop for Jew haters on the internet. And on YouTube, there are episodes of Radio Verwolf, the Zionist organized governments, Goyim, Zog's Nightmare, all Yiddish deployed words to be able to escape what YouTube claims is its uh, dragnet to get this content down. And frankly, even when YouTube's management is told that this content is up there, they still do not take it down. The other open source neo-Nazi hiding sites, this is the content above the surface of the deep web and the dark web, is, for example, a browser uh, website called Minds. It's a US-based social network. Its management refuses to de-platform de hate content. Uh, its founder, Bill Ottman, has been interviewed and claims that he's doing a service for free speech. And on Minds, uh, one will find content from the Adam Waffen Division, the largest neo-Nazi operation in Europe, the Fuhrer Krag Division and the Patriot Front, as well as Generation Identity, a global hate group. And, and on mines, the use of token cryptocurrency by far-right accounts to reward creators or tips on how to engage in potential neo-Nazi operations against synagogues and synagogues and Jewish community centers. There are 550,000 views that earn 38 tokens featured a Jewish man being lynched, okay? That's, and these tokens are used 
to exchange information and content. For example, uh, Eric had been the author of a major study uh, in the front page of the Washington Post a few months ago, how uh, neo-Nazi operations are using illegal steroid sales uh, to convince young people who are into bodybuilding and weightlifting and sports to go to their sites to buy steroids illegally and they pick up this currency, which is how they fund their operations. That's an example of the, the next slide is an example of what you can find when you go to mines. Uh, the Nazis have also, the neo-Nazis have a web hit list. It's, uh, these are anti-Semitic trolls who are creating a web hit list of Jews who are base enemies. These are, this again referring to the base. The list is encrypted on Telegram, uh, which I mentioned to you is an encrypted messaging board. It has 2,400 subscribers. People who are looking at this list that was put together, for example, Senator, uh, Connecticut Senator Blumenthal is on the top of the list. Uh, I'm sure that I am in that list. I'm sure that Eric is in that list because of our public uh, discussions and efforts to try to uh, worm these guys out into the open. So let me turn to section two uh, at, 20, at almost 25 after. The dark and deep web, which is off the grid. You all have heard of the regular web. You now need to understand how much of the anti-Semitic operations are going on in the dark and deep web, which is off the grid. So what is the dark web and what is the deep web? Uh, well, the internet is made up of three different layers. The surface web, which all of us use, that is, you go on to Google, you go on to Facebook, you do your searches, you do your communications, your email, and then there's dark, the dark web and the deep web. The dark web is a network of untraceable online activity and websites. So, for example, when you go into your bank account, uh, some, you can't just Google your password so that, so that if you go into a Bank of America and you're withdrawing money. It's untraceable online activity. And it cannot be uh, any of this content should not be able to be found using search engines and to access, access it, you need to use specific software. So, for example, that's how banks operate their bank accounts and interbank operations. Then you have uh, the deep web. The deep web is an operation that is really below in the bottom dwelling area of the ocean. And Tor is the major browser that people like me know how to access to go into what is called the centralized encrypted routing network that is built to keep users anonymous. So I, I, I yanked a diagram off of, uh, I believe, the CNN, which shows you how this deep and dark web operate. You can see that the search engines are above the surface. Uh, there's Bing and there's Google. Uh, Wikipedia, Twitter, and Amazon operate in shallow waters. And then you have Tor and the dark web, okay? These are political dissidents, illegal porn, drugs, stolen credit cards. This is where neo-Nazis are operating, where most of it through encrypted use of, of all of the apps that I've indicated, as well as social media internet platforms. I wanna talk to you next about this dark web hosting companies. Facebook and Twitter and YouTube all have their own capacity to have their companies go out. You can go online, access their search engines, access their information, and they're able to operate. And then you have what we call community chat rooms and other neo-Nazi hiding sites in the dark web. But they don't have the money uh, to be able to, to run their own browser and infrastructure, web internet infrastructure operations. And so there are plenty of companies around the world, including in the United States, that provide hosting services for these neo-Nazi operations uh, and to be able to host their networks and they provide sites that must that really need to be regulated. And this is one of the major concerns that I have. So much of what lone wolves and domestic terrorists are using are using are being able to access their information through these hosting companies. And without them, anti-Semitic chat rooms and communities would not be able to operate. 
And the names of these companies, I'm sure that most of you have never heard of. Bluehost and Cloudflare. Cloudflare's management ejected the Daily Stormer and Gab when it was revealed that the Pittsburgh uh, shooter was using the, their hosting capacity through Gab and the Daily Stormer to be able to live stream his attack. Uh, the others are listed there. Uh, they're just awful and they're unregulated. And these are companies that are making a fortune out of using the criminal proceeds of neo-Nazi operations to fund their hosting operations. The worst of them is an outfit called HN. HN is a community chat room that is used by most neo-Nazi operatives to chat among themselves, to organize, and to, in effect, exchange encrypted information. It's an anonymous web form and messaging board that serves as the uh, local, local uh, square. When the uh, Charlottesville march occurred, HN was the major uh, gathering place for, for them to organize their operations in Charlottesville. And HN has something called the slash Paul board. And it's, in to, it's to engage in effort posting, that is to promote acts of violence. And that is so, if, for example, the, the kid who went and perpetrated the attack at Poway, there were plenty of copycatters who were inspired by going on to Gab and engage in what is called effort posting. That's a neo-Nazi phraseology that is used to promote acts of violence on HN. HN was taken down. It was taken down when, when uh, the previous company, I'm going to go backwards and show you, when Cloudfare management said that's unacceptable. But now they're back again. They're back again because they found another uh, cloud hosting company to get them back online. It's called, uh, and they're now rebranded themselves as 8KUN, OK? And HN was used to announce the attacks that have occurred all around the country and posting the manifestos of the attackers. Uh, I find it unacceptable that the ACLU will appear before Congress and defend HN when it's nothing but a neo-Nazi incitement operation. And they've been able to inter internationalize their web connections. So for example, this Fiora Creek, Creek division is a splinter of the Adam Waffen division, just as vehement, just as determined to create a rape war in both Europe and the United States. And what we see in the coalition to, for a safer web as we watch what they're doing is they're borrowing extremist tactics, believe it or not, from ISIS to recruit, incite, inspire, and train lone wolves. And the Daily Stormer, which I referenced in a previous slide, now uses dark web services and overseas hosting providers to remain online. So it's not as if you, sh you catch the American companies and can shut them all down. Many of these companies are operating in Europe and elsewhere. So there needs to be a more global approach to shut these down, but certainly more can be done here in the United States. Now I want to talk to you about the base. And I'm going to catch my breath by saying to you that I don't know if any of you have heard about the base. I can say to you objectively, it is the most dangerous operation targeting Jews in the United States in over a century. It is a, its members are coming from, from not only the United States, but Canada and Europe and Australia via Twitter, via Twitter as an incubator. Its goal is to unify all of the neo-Nazi cells and to form an anti-Semitic, anti-migrant attack command and control internet operation on the web. It is a rabid anti-Semitic, and it uses the, uh, the phrase that we use, it's an accelerationist group. Its goal is to start a race war as quickly as possible. It is a one-stop mall for terrorist training, meetups, incitement, counter surveillance and, and bomb making. It's a major threat to us, to your congregations, and to the Jewish community. Its leadership is committed to, is, is determined to commit murder. 
uh, when Vice Magazine or the Vice Investigative Service did an, R, did an expose, was able to penetrate its main chat room, where it is acting just like ISIS, creating propaganda and planning direct action against minorities <clears throat> and engaging in matchmaking recruits. This is just an example of a Twitter feed about that we were able to intercept of a, of a base uh, incitement and communications that's going on. And you can see it better later on. Inside this base, the re a recruit submits an application form. I want you to understand what is happening when a young person uh, is interested in the base. The recruit, after he, he has found out about the base on the open web, submits an application form to a WordPress site. A WordPress site is a site that enables them to fill out an application online, which is then reviewed by a person who seizes their computer or the person who's given access to their website. The application is then vetted by base human resources. There are thousands of members who've gone through this vetting process. And if accepted, the recruit will be invited onto a chat server operated by another one of these web operators, these infrastructure support systems called Riot of all names. It's an open source operating system used for secure messaging. Okay. Once you get admission to the base, the, the base's private chat room in effect opens you to their so-called university where they will be able to see eight channels and go into these channels as if they were going to separate rooms. The first is called the Imperium, which is a major chat room. The second, as you'll see the list here, self-defense books, music, activity reports, trainers, survivalism, and a PDF library with 20 sections with downloadable, downloadable manuals, including how to make your own guns. Okay, This is going on in real time, real time. It is happening as we speak. The operation is growing hourly and daily by people who are joining these from what essentially have been disorganized, unconnected cells or lone wolves into now joining this base. So a far right, a far right team who's radicalized on the base, uh, for example, just a few days ago, a, the FBI in, in, uh, arrested a kid by the name of Richard Tobin of age 18 in New Jersey. He was the major instigator on the base of something called the Great Lakes Cell, okay? And he conceptualized a synagogue vandalism operation to commemorate Kristallnacht in Germany called Operation Kristallnacht. The next day, okay, he was able to incite and inspire other base operatives in the upper Midwest, particularly in Michigan and in Wisconsin to deface and put insignias of the base of the base on synagogues in these cities and states. That's how quickly the base was able to operate. And that's how fortunate we are that's, that the FBI has been able to penetrate some of these efforts. The neo-Nazis are recruiting Generation Zs. Uh, this kid 18 is just representative of the type of people that they are recruiting. They they use uh, very ingenious ways to do this. Uh, sites that you probably have not heard of, for example, one of the most popular sites for uh, late teenagers is the Gen Z meme website used by the base. Something called iFunny, believe it or not, now has a propaganda video showing showing the base training in the U U.S. It's a video game. And it also enables the sale of illicit drugs and steroids to fund neo-Nazi operations. We have talked and have reached out to the digital advertising ecosystem, that is the major corporate advertisers, where we have been able to show them that many of their ads have been rabbit holed into these encrypted sites so that McDonald's ads, for example, are appearing on sites where there's illicit illegal uh, sale of drugs and steroids occurring, much less other operations that are totally unacceptable. And I'll explain to you what they're trying to do, which is gets me to the next uh, section, regulation, legislation, and the private sector. 
so I, want, I already gave you a brief explanation of Section 230, where there's a growing outcry in Congress. But so far, and I spent a lot of time here in Washington going to the Congress, there's been no real legislative success. Congress has so far refused to regulate these B2B tech firms, such as the cloud infrastructure providers that I told you are in effect the oxygen that gives these neo-Nazi operations the dark web capacity to operate. The challenge is posed by encryption as well as privacy laws. And the fact is, is that there was a lot of talk about passing a new te domestic terrorism law. I'm less concerned about passing the domestic terrorism law as much as I am about forcing these web infrastructure support companies out of business. The executive branch, uh, this is not a partisan statement. The Trump administration has done zero, notwithstanding meetings and conferences and presidential ple uh, 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 pledges. The White House has done zero to help provide leadership with social media companies to remove this content uh, and to fight the neo-Nazi operations. There has been a lot of talk. The president have, had a conference a few months ago after the Poway attack and where he did gracefully go to Pittsburgh and meet with the congregations and pledge that his administration would do more. The best that they've come up with is the Department of Homeland Security has said that it's going to re reorganize and launch a domestic terrorist uh, overview operation. Fine, we're waiting for it to happen. So far, it's really the FBI, and God bless the FBI, that has done much to accelerate penetration of white nationalist groups. There are organizations that are doing a great job in at least identifying, but not necessarily advocating the type of solutions that we're calling for in the coalition. The Anti-Defamation League, led by Jason Greenblatt, is doing a really good job uh, doing the technological informational analysis and research of how much the threat is, including the Southern Poverty Law Center. The digital advertising ecosystem that I referred to created something called the Global Alliance for Responsible Media, but that was months ago. They have so far been so disorganized in their efforts to interdict advertising that is uh, uh, coming across their platforms that it's hate inspired. Frankly, the reason is pretty simple. Social media companies need advertising, and the advertisers need the social media companies. They are very reluctant, even though they, they want to do something, very reluctant to push hard on these social media companies. It's going to take Jewish consumers to do more to convince these, social, these advertisers that this has got to be unacceptable, that having uh, advertising appear on neo-Nazi websites should be should stop and these advertising companies are just not doing enough uh corporate america is increasingly concerned about this for example ibm and pfizer are working with us at the very beginning of a of a trajectory to help uh train and educate other companies and other communities around the country about what technology they can adopt to fight neo-nazi operations which is why we need to have a call to action to regulate the dark web service providers. That's what the private sector should be doing as well. I'm, fortunately, Eric and I are working right now with IBM and Pfizer, but we're looking for other companies to work with as well. So in the few minutes that I have, what can you do? Here are some calls to action that we recommend mobilizing your congregation around. I have to tell you, Again, I say this as someone who cares deeply for the Jewish community uh, in this country. There is sufficient proactivity by the Jewish community on an organized basis. Too many people say, well, the ADL is doing it, the Southern Poverty Law Center is doing this, uh, the FBI is doing this. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just, we're just another attack away from another massacre, another 10 massacres, okay? We're not doing enough. We are not mobilized well. There's no civic coalition to push for changes in the content immunity that would force social media companies uh, to move more quickly. And when will consumers, as I said, demand more accountability from digital advertisers? So I've listed here some things that I hope that you will take away 
from this presentation. Uh, we're prepared to offer other webinars and to come out and to address your congregation or collective congregations on the anti-extremist threat as well as to do something that we launched here in Montgomery, launched in Washington. I, uh, because I cared so much about this on my own volition uh, two years ago, I launched a pilot project in Montgomery County, uh, Maryland schools, high schools, to begin training young adults on the threat of neo-Nazi and anti-Semitic and hate content on social media platforms and what to do about it. Uh, we also have worked hard to develop manuals, education manuals that are used in high schools throughout Germany and France uh, that are we could do here. And those manuals are easily, with some support, we could easily make them available or produce a manual for Jewish uh, day schools and universities, as well as other school systems. Uh, number two, we've got to demand regulation. I go keep going back to this, to the dark web operations. We've got to end Section 230 content immunity. Congress is tied up in knots on this. There is insufficient public outcry. Uh, and to make it worse, instead of social media companies spending the money that they should be spending on technological innovation, if I told you that collectively in 2019, Google and YouTube alone, uh, as well as Facebook, spent $33 million lobbying Congress not to grant, not to lift the immunity that is granted to them under Section 230. Section 230. Okay, I repeat, $33 million, okay? And so there's no accountability from them as long as they have this. Uh, I have also been creative in trying to inspire shareholder action in annual corporate meetings of these social media companies, as well as to use the tax system, as well as fines to fine encryption companies which do not cooperate with the FBI. Oh, I'll hear all sorts of outcries about the ACLU. Let me make it abundantly clear here. We're not talking on the spectrum of what we call incitement on one side and hate speech on the other, where we're talking about free speech. There is no right to free speech on, in private companies on social media, period. Anyone who argues with you that there's a First Amendment right here is absolutely throwing, throwing wool over your eyes. None of these companies and anyone who uses them have any right to grant free speech under the First Amendment, okay? And the ACLU tries to argue that the internet should be free. My argument is, uh, fine, I'm not trying to take down speech. I'm trying to take down incitement, hate and extremist incitement. And that's the far spectrum away from, from free speech. The coalition is a new organization. We need money to help fund our operation. Uh, we have, we've been funding this on a shoestring because we really just started it out. The chairman of our board is uh, Tom Ridge, the, form, the first head of the Department of Homeland Security. It's nonpartisan and bipartisan, less the Crown, many of you have heard of, uh, from the Crown companies from Chicago, a major Jewish philanthropist. Uh, Michael Steele, the former chairman of the, the, the uh, GOP. Uh, here, here we have Democrats and Republicans as well as others. We're determined to fight this fight, but we need more support. And I'll close by saying I want to thank you. I wanted to be as direct and blunt as I can because we are deeply concerned for the Jewish community's health and welfare. We stand ready to make ourselves available to you. And I want to thank the National Assembly of Rabbis for permitting me to make this presentation. I'm sorry that Eric was unable to speak during the presentation, but I know he would join me by saying we are dedicated to helping you mobilize the troops you need to make this fight a great fight that would protect our people. Thank you. Ambassador Ginsburg, thank you sir. so very much. I'm sorry, just one second. Thank you so very much for um, this very in insightful and disturbing uh, presentation that you made to us. Uh, we've certainly learned a lot and um, we have our work cut out for ourselves. We have a couple of minutes left and if anybody has a question to pose, then um, you'll notice on the bottom of your screen, to the bottom right of your screen, there is a chat box 
and we'd be very happy to pose those questions to Ambassador Ginsburg if you'll type them if you'll type them in on the bottom right of your screen. Um, we'll wait a moment to see if anybody has a question to pose. Ambassador Ginsburg, how did you personally get involved in this particular um, line of work? Uh, about uh, eight, eight, seven, eight years ago, well, I first started a, a media production company, an Arabic media production company after 9-11 with under the aegis of jo President George H.W. Bush and Henry Kissinger who wanted to find a way in which to rebut the support that Arabs were providing to Al-Qaeda after 9-11. And I co-founded well, Israeli... Questions coming in, so I thank you all very much for calling in today and for participating with us, and we'll look forward to uh, being with everyone at our next, uh, at our next presentation. Thank you.